What's good, y'all? It's your man, Dale, same time for a DL short. As you guys know, um, I talk about a little bit of everything. I haven't talked any politics uh, yet <laughs> this week, but I'm going to. Uh, we're probably touching on a little bit here, just a, just a little bit. But, um, yeah, your man Donald Trump's in a lot of trouble, like real trouble, to the point where, man, he's going to have to sit down. And I don't know if he's going to, you know, stay in jail, but I think he's going to get locked up. And I also believe that Biden's going to pardon him. But, you know, we'll talk about that later on on Downrange Podcast. We'll talk about that. Uh, but here we're going to talk. We um, I got some Destiny stuff. Um, you know, I'm always uh, looking at um, and talking about things that are going on out there in that world. So the Blue Haired Warrior is here with uh, Angela. Angela, for those who don't know, is uh, she was on Fresh and Fit a long time ago, and then she branched off with uh, mm-hmm. some guys that were part of the Fresh and Fit team that actually turned out to be bad actors. And they went on to do uh, their version of Fresh and Fit in Miami. She went with them um, and allegedly helped them get started financially. Uh, like she's not from South Florida. I want to say she's from Central Florida. She's just down and was kind of doing her thing in the space. Um, I don't have all information on that. It is what it is. The guys were bad guys. She got she got caught up with some bad dudes. It is what it is. I think it might have cost her a couple of dollars, but she's still on the scene. Uh, and she was on uh, Sauce Cast. And she was the one who asked MLD the question, hey, why did you know why did you call me fat or whatever? And you know, and then that guy John from you know MLD, you know, just ran away. Um, it is what it is, and he's been running away ever since, right? So that's who she is. She's uh in studio with Destiny, and they're having a conversation. It's a few, I got one, two, three, four, five, I got about five uh bullet points here, time hacks we're gonna look at and kind of make some comments, man. Like I said, um you know, it's I'm the old guy in the room, so I'm I'm taking this in and I'm, you know, giving my take on it as an old dude who's just kind of looking at everything. Right. I'm I'm kind of just kind of checking it out, looking at the battlefield and, um, you know, just giving my two cents. Uh, so this is me giving my two cents uh, on Angela and Destiny, man. So let's pull this up. And check this out. First, they were talking about um, uh, you don't have to agree with me right if you don't agree with me that doesn't mean you hate me (laughs) and that doesn't mean we're enemies i don't even know you there's a lot of people like i don't agree with you i'm like fine there's people that i know through youtube and they're like hey i don't agree with you like that's cool you don't have to as you know it's all good it's food for thought this is how it works right you don't have to agree with me on every single point and if we disagree on some point it doesn't mean we're enemies from that point on or if we agree on one point doesn't mean we're friends right i am not a donald trump fan but I could go through a lot of Donald Trump stuff and find something like, okay, this makes sense to me. But the the rest of this stuff doesn't. <laughs> right? Simply because I found this one thing that I agree with, with this guy doesn't mean that that's, that's my best bud. You feel me? So there's a lot of people out there who are like that. And I, and I chalk a lot of that up to inexperience and youth. Hey, y'all, you're not going to agree with everyone. All right? So it is what it is. That doesn't mean you got to go put on your battle armor and go face them, (laughs) you know what I mean, on the battlefield. Yo, you just don't agree on that point. You agree on this point over here. So, um, yeah, man, like, you know, ease up a little bit, people. So let's listen to what Destiny has to say about it. Check this out. Um, Okay, I think it's hard for people to disagree and and still do whatever for a couple of reasons. Um, One, people have a really hard time, like, I don't mind disagreeing with somebody and not hating them, mm-hmm. but a lot of people have a really hard time disagreeing with somebody and hating like every single aspect of them. Yeah. Um, for whatever reason, I can compartmentalize really well. Like, I respect Myron as a person because he's hasn't. He seems like a really loyal person. He's never fucked me over personally. He doesn't talk about me or anything like that. <laughs> anything that he Stand said. Together, Reddit, um, keyboard warriors. Oh seven. Hold on. Anything that he said negatively about me. Uh, I don't even know if he says negative stuff about me, but anything he says, he'll say to my face on the show, which I also think is another big thing. Um, the second thing is is that that like. I won't go on these shows and be like, oh, yeah, like Red Pill, you know, I disagree a little, but it's like pretty cool. And then go into my stream and be like, this shit is retarded. Right, right, right. Like when I'm on the shows, I'm like, this shit is retarded, <laughs> right? When I came into these spaces, so this is kind of a question that I had. And I, I think I fought with um, Fresh and Fit, I think, a lot on our first couple episodes trying to, trying to figure out like – um what what are you guys advocating for so when i would bring up like andrew tate tweets and bugattis and all that shit, a lot of the times um 
these two clowns would tell me, they'd say, oh, this stuff is just a proxy for uh, success. You know, you don't actually need the Bugatti. You need the ability to buy the Bugatti. You don't need to travel the world. You need to be, have freedom, you know, and all these things. So it's lucky we're moderating. Yeah, yeah man. So it seems like, so it feels like a Lamborghini. But I think there's like a mutual respect that builds from that because like, we'll go out to eat afterwards. And even, at, even at dinner, we'll fight. I'll say like, this is retarded. But like, there's like a mutual respect and there's a, everybody knows where each other is. But a lot of people. And he's right about that, y'all. This is this is how the world should work. This is how the world used to work here in America. People would get out of the factories, man. They would know, be working in the factories in middle of America. They go to the bar on their way home. They'd all have a beer or whatever, and they would discuss stuff. And most of these men who were having these discussions were veterans. You know, they fought in some conflict somewhere. Either it was World War II, Korea, Vietnam. You know what I mean? They served. So, and they worked hard. And, you know, that's the way the world was. And everyone had varying uh, opinions. They didn't all agree on everything, but there was a mutual respect there. So I think a lot of that respect is lost these days for whatever reason. I think the reason is, again, people don't get punched in the mouth anymore. Like this, this, you know, I mean, those men that I was talking about back in the day, they knew if they pushed the boundary, if they crossed the line, they were going to have to put these up. It was it was on like it, and it, it would tussle or whatever. And it wasn't over the, you know, I like this politician and you like that politician. Nah, it's over. You know, you wrong. You insulted me. We got a problem. Let's go ahead and air this out and then come back in here and finish our beer. That's just how it was. It's not like that anymore. You know what I mean? There are too many extremes out there right now, but, but he's right. Um, you know, when I'm out, if I'm, if I'm in Miami and I'm kicking it with Miami Fresh, we're talking about stuff, bro. We don't agree on a lot of stuff, bro, especially when it comes to uh, these hardcore conservative things. Like there's just a lot of stuff, like a lot of Trump stuff. I don't agree with um, value tainment, like uh, Adam and, and, uh, PBD and those guys, they're they were big time DeSantis guys. I don't know where they sit now, but you know, they were pretty big on DeSantis. I'm not that big on DeSantis. Uh, you know, just looking at his policies down here in Florida and what he's doing doesn't make any sense to me. I'm not big on DeSantis. I'm not big on his policies, right? What Putin did invading Ukraine, right? Being an old soldier. I was never behind Russia on that. That was wrong. That's absolutely wrong. So me and Myron will go back and forth on that. Me and um Sneeko will go back and forth on that. And, you know, they're like, OK, so and I can tell them what to look into. Hey, yo, man, this is why I'm saying this. Look into this. Look into that. And they'll go and look into it. They'll get into the, you know, like, all right, man, go look into what, you know, Putin's background, you know, KGB, bro. Look at what was going on with, you know, the, the Soviet Union, USSR. Look into this. And they will go look into it. And even if they come back like, well, you know, I still think that this guy is this. All right. That this guy is that. I'm like, all right, cool. You know, I'm I'm definitely on the other side of that. But it doesn't mean we go fight. You know what I mean? We just sit there and keep and keep eating because normally this will be over dinner or just hanging out. You know what I mean? Just kind of sitting there chilling. So this is how you should be. If you're sitting around with people and you guys agree 100 percent with everything, you, you're in a bubble. Get out of that bubble. You got to find some people who are going to challenge you to think. Right. That's what it boils down to. To think. Let's continue on this industry will be like really polite on a show and then afterwards yeah. they'll get really nasty and then that's people start to get really f irritated right. more than anything else more than any disagreement yeah yeah no i definitely noticed that and um i think that's what okay so serious note <clears throat> uh i think like everyone was a couple of people were like oh uh, was it the stitch i did with their video and they're like oh you're associating yourself with that cuck and i was like <sighs> Because I don't want to open up this portal, guys. Uh -huh. And what I learned from everything, again, like I think like coming from being a nail tech, like you don't really think when you hear people in these debating space, they'll say like, oh, define this, define that, because you're using these terms. You don't really know what they mean. And it doesn't really apply to the person. And I think. Right. And she went on to talk about some things, but and I, I get what she was coming from. But the, the point of that, that that first quick little segment there is what what uh, Destiny was saying about how people, you know, they they if they disagree with you or something you say that they want to absolutely hate your guts behind it. That doesn't make any sense, folks. That doesn't make any sense at all. Go back and just, if someone challenges your position, that is a good thing. You need people like that in your circle. So we're going to, we're going to fast forward this just a little bit. Uh, so when um, Angela was talking about having advantages as a woman, you know, like getting, you know, having people wanting to do stuff for you. Right. So let's jump into that. Here we go. Yeah, annoying because it's irrelevant to half the topics that we talk about. Sure. But I do recognize that it opens up doors. And that's another thing that says it when they say that women have these advantages and men don't. And I'm like, well, the the advantages come with like a caveat. So it's not really an advantage. Like you have to blow someone 
or some shit. and it's like not really an advantage because if you don't blow them you get kicked back to the curb uh -huh. back down with the rest of the gutter so like am i really having an advantage because i haven't seen it honestly i've been like you think you you want to take like the whole forbidden apple thing and then you realize that there's there's no benefit to this so i've definitely noticed you take five steps forward and then 10 steps back uh -huh. um being a girl and being asian i'd have to say that because especially if you're in a relationship i don't know yeah. i could be wrong i don't know the other side of uh, being on a yacht and all that shit that's a different <laughs> experience so yeah um yeah <laughs> so and i mean she kind of starts laughing she was thinking you know about like that that life in miami that that city girl life that big city girl life right and that's what she was kind of laughing about but here's the thing you know she was saying well it's not really an advantage because you have to give something up you know typically you have to do something sexual to to get into that room as an attractive woman you're gonna have to do something sexual to get on the yacht to get on a private jet Yes, that's what they're going to want you to do. But the finesse, the game is to manage to withhold that. That's the game. The fact that they're going to offer you access to the room, to the VIP, you know, to wherever. Yeah, they're trying to smash. Absolutely. But your, you know, your battle is to keep that to yourself, unless, of course, you want them. Right. So there's a finesse there. And, and that's what, you know, when guys, you know, talk about this, like, you know, uh, Andrew Tate talks about this, you know, Myron talks about this, you know, anyone who's been around a while, anyone who knows the game is going to, they're going to tell you like, yeah, man, women can get on. Women can get on. And if you would do like uh, Michael Sertain, why do you think he keeps so many women around him? Why do you think he surrounds himself with beautiful women? Because that gives him access. That gives him access to exclusive parties. You know what I mean? Be it in the Hollywood Hills, be it in the, uh, you know, the presidential suites in Vegas, be it in the Hamptons wherever right be it on the yacht to miami you surround yourself with a core group of beautiful women so you got four or five times i'm talking about legit teens that are with you they bringing you wherever they go bro and you can go in and work the room and all the powerful men in there are going to be looking at you like who is that guy they why they want to get to know you because you know all these beautiful women so it's a finesse and that's what the guys are talking about in the red pill world. That's just how the game is played. I tell folks all the time, man, don't hate the players, man. Hate the game. That's how the game works. Ladies, if you're out there and you're beautiful, like you are way above average, you're an attractive woman, and you're out there in them streets, don't be smashing everybody because these guys know each other. Right? The finesse is to get what you're trying to get. You're trying to make connections, and you're trying to get into the, into the room, onto the boat, right, into the space. Do it without using your sexuality, i.e. do it without giving them the Foxy Brown. Don't be just smashing every dude you see. If you want to. That's what you want to do. That's fine. But you're going to get that access just based on your beauty. Whereas someone like me, even when I was young, nah, I ain't getting it. It's going to take me. I got to do work. I got to come in. I got to pay. <laughs> right? I got to pay. If I want to jump into the limo full of beautiful women and go into the club and get into the VIP, I'm paying. It's point blank. If, if I'm the dude just sitting in the VIP and some dudes come up with a, you know, with a girl, whatever, this is my buddy, so-and-so, and, 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 and can he come up here with us and eat all the free food and drink all the free drink? I'm like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm going to need $200. Oh, I ain't got no money. Well, you can wait over there, over there, bro. Security, get him out of here and take her with him. And she'll, she'll be like, bye. I'm like, he can't come. You can stay, baby, but he can't come. And guess what? She going to hug him like, all right, I'm going to see you later. That's the finesse. <laughs> That's how it works, y'all. Don't get mad at the game. It is what it is. Um, let's see. They were talking about getting to know each other. I'm going to skip over that. We're going to talk. They were talking about divorce. It's a little bit about divorce and how divorce works. Let's look at that a little bit, right? That's right at nine. Okay, let's check this out, guys. That they do this in this other the, their lives, whatever. That's fine, but don't present this as normal. It's like it's not. It's actually insane. Yeah, like the, it feels like sometimes like the entire red pill movement is based on like Andrew Tate's like YouTube videos. Sometimes we're like, oh yeah, like this is a normal way to live, and it's like, no, what are you talking about? Yeah. Um, I was gonna say about that. I think you're absolutely right. And how do you feel about the stats? I think that was bringing up the stats to prove their point. But I have, I, I like hate it. Which stats? That they always use stats. Oh, this is. Uh, like a statistic like they always say like uh, women um, initiate like what 70 percent of divorces and i always get irritated with that because mm -hmm. i think you have to bring up the context behind that and they don't really do that no every single stat they bring up is like half true or just completely not true or there's like a really good reason for it that 80 percent divorce rate or 70 percent divorce 
trade that they bring up is something that's brought up a lot. I still need to research this, especially because I'm going on shows in like a week. Um, but like somebody emailed me and said that that 80% divorce rate stat, that was brought up because there was one study one time that analyzed a bunch of couples, I think like a few hundred or a thousand couples. And like of the 80 or of, I think of like the 55 that got divorced of 80% of that 55 of those couples, like the woman initiated the divorce. Mm. So that number comes from literally, I believe it comes from one study, number one. And number two, even if that was the case that you grant that women divorce more than men, um, I had like a, I had a woman attorney email me who does like family law or whatever. She explained that the reason why she, she said she didn't know the exact numbers, but she would believe it if it was true. The reason why is because especially in case where children are present, women need to get that divorce because they need to get that process started in order to secure everything they need for like their child and them. Like if they want to get insurance, if they want to enroll their kid in school, if they want to do all these things, if you're married as a woman, you're fucked because every questionnaire that you answer, every application for everything, you've got to like put all your husband's information. Mm -hmm. And for the guy, if the guy is broken up with the wife and he doesn't have the kids, it doesn't matter if you're married or not. Like who the fuck cares? Like you go, it's not like you and wife to do anything. You just like, you keep working, you do whatever. So it's not surprising in those cases that the woman is like, and I need to file for stuff. Um, yeah. So it, it, considering that women are oftentimes like, and, and and this is one of those kind of like I don't I don't agree with anything Destiny just said. Maybe that was the case back in the seventies, the eighties, early nineties. Maybe I don't know, but I don't I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that at all. Most separated before they get divorced, so they they've already separated. They and if they have kids, they've pretty much worked that part out. You know, um, it, it is what it is. That the, the the whole point you know of what he's saying, like, well, women have to initiate a divorce. No, the guy could initiate the divorce. Right. A lot of places have no fault. They go in together. And, you know, there are people who just go, hey, this is just how we're going to do it. Boom. Divorces get messy. And, um, you know, when we you go into family court and you're dealing with family law and money and all that, a lot of that has to do with emotions. A lot of that has to do with emotion. Like the dudes, dudes are emotional. Men, men women, are, women are emotional. They'll go in there. People go in there and, and it, it's a fight. It's a fight. And they're going to fight over everything they can fight over from. You know what I mean? From the house to the car to the paintings to the kids, they're gonna fight over everything, bro. And it's it's a sloppy, messy, ugly process, right? So, and they were talking about on this. I'm a you know I'm gonna link this video in the description. And they were talking about how people, um, you know, don't want to get married and this and that. Like it's stupid, don't get married. It's gonna be a part. We're gonna get into that here in a second. But it's it's dealing with the state that's the problem. Yeah, I, I'm. You know, and we talk about this, you know, a lot at length, you know, getting married, being with someone is great. But you why get married to the state? Why deal with that? Even Destiny would agree that 50 percent of marriages in America in, in divorce. Right. 50 percent in in divorce. And of the other 50 percent, that doesn't mean that they, they ride off into the sunset and they live happily ever after. No, a lot of those marriages, they separate. They just live separate lives. They just don't bother to go get divorced for whatever reason. A lot of that has to do with money and separating stuff or whatever, or whatever reason they have. Why deal with it? You know, that that's that's just it. That's the red pillars. A lot of the red pillars, they're asking that question. Like, why deal with it, man? Why deal with it? Why, why not just get married legally? Uh, not legally. Why not get married religiously? Or why not get married in another country? Why why get married in America? Why get married in, in, in the Western world like UK, Australia, Canada, New Zealand? Why do that? That's what they're saying. And I think there's a conversation to be had. We all know that our family court system needs some work. You know what I mean? Point blank, period. It, it, that's just, it is what it is. And I think that's, you know, I, I think it's going to change. I think it's going to change. And the reason it's going to change is because it is going to begin to hurt women. Um, and they, uh, Destiny kind of touched on it. I'm just fast forwarding to the next part here. Destiny kind of touched on it. So let's jump ahead. You like you're not buying her meals. Right, like right. you didn't give her a fucking, you know food card for you know lunch. Like yeah. what what are you providing her? Uh, and then like we, and realistically, in my personal opinion, and I'm a man of the modern era, I think obviously both people should work. Except if you've got like kids, I can understand like one parent, mm -hmm. generally the woman like taking time off work. But like these guys don't want to have kids, mm -hmm. and these guys and they also don't want to have. Also, this is another crazy thing, is these motherfuckers will talk about they talk about so many things that are contradictory. They'll talk about how important it is to have family and shit, but then they'll talk about like never wanting to get married. Yeah. And it's like, I'm sorry, but you are actually mind numbingly fucking stupid. If you really think that a woman is going to be willing to commit to having children with you, but you won't even commit to marriage to her. Yeah. Destiny, bro, you wrong <laughs> right here. You wrong. I mean, he's a numbers guy and he, he can pull up the numbers himself. The overwhelming majority of child of children born today are born out of wedlock. 
So women are indeed willing to have meant the children of men who will not commit to marriage to them. That's that's what a lot of people say the problem is. Women are having babies with guys not being married to these guys. Now, okay, you know, y'all may, well, come on, Saint, you know that, you know, this women are pushed back on me like, well, come on, Saint, you know, these guys said they were going to do this and said that they do that. They lied to the woman. She had the baby. They didn't, whatever. Like, yeah, but why did she allow herself to do that? Like, you know, it's, don't get pregnant by a guy if you're not married to him, if your intent is to marry him. Just like we were saying, the finesse on getting on the boats and getting into these spaces with, with the, you know, I mean, top tier guys, right? It's the same thing. You can't give somebody what they want and hope that they're going to give you what you want. It, it, you you got to be smarter than that. Like, all right, you want to get, man, you want this? All right, cool. In order to get this, I need to see that. Oh, you want me to have your baby? Well, you got to marry me. You know, I see women like, I don't see no ring on his finger. Women always had that talking relationships, most of them. So where are we going? So, what you know, what are we doing here? Women don't want to just be there getting smashed. They they want to be married. If that's what they want to be, then they got to make that clear and don't have any babies until you do get married. That happens. You know what I mean? So what he's saying right there, like, now, nah, women are having babies right now today without being married. Lots and lots, not lots, because the the replacement numbers are down. Like we're, you know, uh, birth rates are down, marriages are down. But for those who are having kids, they don't they don't mind having kids. You have women who have you know multiple children with multiple men. You you have women who aren't married, but they'll have two or three children from that same guy, even though they're not married to that guy. He's doing what he wants to do. You know, if you want to be married, make that clear. And if they do make it clear, it's like, I'm not going to marry you, but we can stay together and live together and you accept that. then that's what it is, right? That's what it is, man. Let's continue. Out of your mind. Um, yeah, I think that's the, it goes back to the ghetto mentality because when I grew up with seeing how marriages were and how my family were, I was like, damn, I don't want to be married ever. So I was like mm -hmm. super anti-marriage, anti-kids for a really long time um, until I got into the space. And I was like, dude, that's so unhealthy. And then yeah. you start building, you know, your character and you start building more relationships and everyone's like, why don't you? You're in such a better place. And I'm like, you know what? Mm -hmm. I am institutionalized. What the f is wrong with me? Sure. And I think that's what it is. Like when I listen to a lot of these guys talk before I would hear like people would push on like, oh, you're insecure or maybe who hurts you. Mm -hmm. And you would think it was just like a petty insult, but there is a core, like a lot of people are hurt and they don't want to talk about it. And mm -hmm. I'm like, and you talk about men's mental health, but like, you're not really allowing each other to tap into the actual hurt and to grow from it. Sure. It's really disappointing. Again, sort of full circle about that. Yeah. Uh, to be fair, like saying who hurts you is not a good argument. Like you have to be able to back it up. And I can understand people wanting to fight back against that because they would probably say the same to me or to other, yeah, anybody else too. But um, yeah. But I think there's a core to it though. I think like not just saying like who hurts you, but it's essentially like if it gets to that point, if someone's saying that, I think I would question like what do you mean like mm -hmm. what do you mean we say that can we can we talk about this but i wouldn't start like insulting people for no reason at this point no mm -hmm. more insulting sure um damn we agree on everything we don't know what to talk about <laughs> do you um how, are you like a big trump DeSantis supporter or? uh which one I think, okay, the reason why I'm like so tricky on that answer that I'm so torn because I think I understand from like a business standpoint and then also from like a consumer's like position. So mm -hmm. moderately, I guess like Trump, uh, then, then it gets a little bit iffy. And also, I don't really know. So maybe that's something I have to be un like educated on. Oh, Scotty, that's cool. I know him. Wait. And she didn't, you know, they came off that topic quick. It's pretty much that that's all I said about Trump and DeSantis. They, she came off that topic pretty quick. Oh, Scotty or whatever. And starts talking about some dude in the chat, right? DeSantis or Trump. There are a ton of Republicans out there. Why is it always boiled down to those two? And people are like, well, they're the front runners. You got one guy who's under indictment and the other guy who's the governor of a state that's falling apart. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? Why we got to talk about these two dudes? Let's talk about who's below Trump. Why do you think there's so many Republicans jumping in this race? They see what's going on. They see the writing on the wall. So, you know, that 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 right there, mm -mm, mm -mm. Right? start thinking other Republicans. <laughs> if, you, if you're on that side, start thinking other Republicans. You might want to start looking at Nikki Haley. You might want to start looking at Liz Cheney. You might want to start looking at, you know what I mean, Scott. You might want to start looking at different Republicans. That's all I'm saying. The, the, the top two dudes, they got problems. They got problems. But, you know, um, 
yes, are there problems with the manosphere? Are there problems with the red pill way of thinking? Yeah, they could be. There's problems with the blue pill way of thinking. There's problems with all sorts of ways of thinking. If you're just locked into that, that one thing, I'm just on this one track, this one track mind, you're going to have problems. Have people challenge your beliefs. We definitely have a problem with divorce in this country. We do. Right? And then, you know, when we talk, like red pill guys are talking about, you know, marriage. And I say this all the time. If you don't have nothing as a guy, if you're, if you're a brokey, you know what I mean? Shout out to Andrew Tate. That's a term they like to use. If, if, you're a broke, if you're a broke dude, if you're average or less than average financially, don't have a lot of real prospects, you got this woman who's willing to marry you, man, go ahead and get married. There's nothing wrong with that. You don't need money to be happy and to be in love. I mean, go ahead and get married. What are you going to lose? If you have something, male or female, in this country, if you have something, if you've done the work and you're sitting on assets, you might want to consider getting married. You, you might want to think about it. When I, when I say consider, I mean think about it. You might want to consider your options. You might want to consider a prenup. You might want to consider not doing it you know, via the state. You might want to consider doing it in a, re a religious ceremony. You might want to be up to speed on common law uh, marriages and stuff like that, how the state looks at that. You, you might want to have your attorney sit you down and, and run you through the different things because you can lose. Women, we're getting to a point where y'all can lose. Y'all making money, y'all doing good. You get you a guy who's home watching the kids. Destiny was like, well, normally it's the woman who stays home and watch the kids. Not all the time. Not all the time, especially in a world where women are starting to make money and, and do things. They have to go and, you know, they have to go and work. They have to go do the stuff. So if she's out making money, dudes at home taking care of the kids, someone files for divorce. It's the person who was at home with the kids, the person who makes the le least amount of money, the person who walked away from their jobs. That's the person who's going to get the child. That they're going to get the house. It's not gender based. It's, they looking at money. And when that happens, I'm telling y'all could be wrong when I'm telling you when that happens, right? Women are going to be like, this is wrong. We need to change something because women are more active politically. I think things are going to happen. So that's my take on it. But yeah, like, like I said, I, I, I agree with what a lot destiny has to say. Makes sense to me. I agree with him. You know, um, I was hoping to spend more time in Miami. I'm trying to catch up with destiny. Um, but again, I'm dealing with the family law system. I'm dealing with some issues, which is making it real difficult for me. But like Andrew Tate said, it's 100% my responsibility. My situation is my fault. I did what I did to get me in that situation. Shout out to Andrew Tate. And I'm going to do a live tonight, and I'm going to be talking about that. Well, you know, Andrew Tate uh, and his thoughts on accountability to men. I'm going to talk about that tonight. That's going to be the live later on. I'm not sure when I'm going to do it. Probably, um, I don't know, five hours from now, six hours from now, something like that. It'll probably be around uh, 7, 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. PM. We're going to talk about that. So, so yeah, like, you know, I, I think we're headed for a shift. I think we're headed for a shift. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to do that real quick. I wanted to jump on and talk about, you know, Destiny. Shout out to Destiny. Shout out to Angela, um, you know, and everyone else out there. Uh, thanks for watching me, man. This is a pretty long short, but hey, <laughs> I, I guess now my shorts are going to be under 30 minutes. <laughs> Let's just do that. Normally, and I'm going to break this up too. Yeah, I'm going to break this up into some clips and post it. So, I appreciate it, man. If you check me out, appreciate it. You know, I'm brand new to the space, y'all. I'm just out here just grinding, trying to put in work. Uh, hopefully, this will spark some conversations out there, man. Hopefully, you you guys get out there and talk to some folks who are going to challenge your position, right? And that's a good thing. Don't allow yourself to get trapped in an echo chamber. Come out of your comfort zone. Come out of your bubble. Meet other people and figure it out, y'all figure it out. All right. So that's it. Y'all know what it is. I'm DL Saint. Man, I'm going to talk to y'all later. Peace.